Yes. yes. Third time in about five minutes. It's really cold. But uh, I should press on. Great shunner fell. Oh, great, well, great shunner really, fell. Really, really good. bad snowstorm. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting to say the least. I mean, I lost, my, I was losing my way there, so I'm hard to actually see my GPS. Goggles covered in snow, GPS covered in snow. That was just really, really tough. Energy sapping stuff. Okay. <laughs> I've done the Challenger South a few times. Did the North two years ago. Um, won a place after volunteering. This race has had everything. Uh, it's been brutally cold. I mean, it's been painfully cold. We, we all came off Shonafell, headed up to the Tan Hill and uh, we all look wrecked. Cushion on well. Still got a nice cushion before the cut off. So, yeah, and today's gonna be very little wind, blue skies. So just got to optimize it as much as can. Maybe try and make a push for Crossfell for late afternoon, but who knows? Get to whatever CP next and then go from there. So, you know, but yeah. Thanks. Have a good day, man. Very icy, uh, slippy. Yeah, I've been doing okay, you know, all considering. I think it's just that personal challenge that. The idea that you can do anything that you sort of tell yourself you can, and only those that say they can't won't ever succeed. A lot of physical pain between uh, start and finish, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just about that showing you've got that strength of mind. It's all about sleep deprivation, really, and trying to fix that. Legs feel fine, and there is 100 miles to go, so it's, it's just countdown from here. Some people get five, six, seven hours, and I don't know how they can do it, but... And, and also, just the idea of being in the same place for that length of time, it's just, you can get too comfortable, so you just want to get in and keep moving. And so, a little bit here and there makes a difference. I'm going to try and stay up right on this race. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Austin Lasagna. I've been dreaming about it all night. I feel, I feel okay, I feel okay. Yeah, I need a little bit of a sleep. Um, sunrise was absolutely incredible. We were we were held back at Langdown back. We weren't allowed to leave till 11 o'clock, so we headed out up over high up nip, deep deep snow drifts. But yeah, it was cold. We had to go fully kitted out, goggles and all, to stop the the wind burn. Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty special adventure, even though you're pushing on and on and on. It is relentless this race. It's just constant. I mean, we both in the summer. That's kind of how we we know each other. But this is off the scale. This is... Yeah, you haven't got much chance to bivvy out in these kind of conditions. No, really. no micro-naps on the trail. No. <laughs> what a beautiful day. We were up on Crossfell at sunrise, so couldn't be better, really. So yesterday after Middleton, we went along the river. Yeah, the weather closed in. And it got quite sleety and very cold. We got to Langdon Beck and they held us there. Um, we were planning to leave together at nine because it was looking like it was going to be 50 mile per hour winds up over cross fell and thing. So we got a bit of rest and then set off um, and it was beautiful, clear skies when we set off, not much wind at all and yeah. Everything she said, <laughs> I can't remember it. I, I was with her but yeah, uh, it sounds a true reflection of what happened that. Yeah. Lost my marbles, lost my memory. Yeah, it just needs more sleep but enjoying it, sun's out, this is the weather we wanted for the spine. We got it, so very lucky. Feel very grateful to be here. Um, just a just a wonderful adventure. We got the sun. We got the rain. We got the snow. We got the high winds. The, the biggest challenge at the moment is definitely the ice. It looks soft and fluffy, snow on top, and the next thing you know, you're uh, on your butt. It's dangerous. Yeah. So I've been fallen six, seven times. This is definitely was up there in the list of. Uh, big challenges out there. You rescued me 
last year you picked me up in your car. I got further this year. Yeah, last year I I sort of developed vertigo and a severe headache just outside Hebden on the, having come through the checkpoint. Always said I wouldn't come back again. Came back again and trained the same way. Not ill. Weather has been better, which has been really good. I'm not going to think about Crossfell yet. Deal with that when we come to it. Looking forward to kissing the wall. Just say, don't use me saying, looking forward to kissing the wall, it will be good. <laughs> You gotta get the Americans on the daily recap. Every time, well, this is his third attempt and yep. we're gonna do it this year. My yep. second, we brought uh, we brought Al for his first time and, uh, and and we're gonna get it done this year. And uh, everybody that we talked to through here just can't believe that, you know, we came from America and how did we hear about this race? And uh, we're trying to recruit more, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if we're doing a good job or not, but. <laughs> I mean, I made it to Dufton last year and, and bombed out and then had an insane time in the uh, through Crossfell. It was unbelievable. This guy, we've been working as a team, us three Americans, this whole entire time. So a couple times, a couple of us were going to drop and we just, uh, we've all worked together and, and got, and we're going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Never expected it to be as tough as, tough as it is, but it's, it's been so rewarding. I'm just having a great time. Um, just a really good time. I love it here. Uh, could be better. You know, getting through it, so almost to Bellingham. <laughs> Definitely takes a lot to finish it. I just wanted to see what the hardest race was like in the UK. Um, I've done a few of these in the US and definitely this one is one of the hardest races that I've done. So <laughs> you guys got to speed up think. <laughs> Yeah, it's really tough, but it's it's really beautiful. I'm absolutely exhausted now. I've had one hour sleep since Sunday. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a snooze somewhere. We don't have to be out of Bellingham until noon tomorrow. And what is it now, about half past three in the afternoon today. So loads of time just to grind out the last 15 miles, get to Bellingham, have a sleep, and get up and get to Kurt Yetton. Today is amazing, rewarding. Why well, yesterday was quite grim, quite hard, really uh, demanding. So the hardest time I ever had on Crossville, I can say. Because of January, you never know how it is. And it's always like, it's always a surprise what you get. But it's definitely a challenge, but also a really nice experience because you feel like you have the elements and it's all like, well, get along with what you get and sort it out. January has a lot of darkness anyway, so if I go mentally through darkness, I could also go physically. I think it's a, a better way to go sort to sort it and to find out about myself. I mean, some some kind of cleansing effect as well, and you meet a lot of brilliant people here. It has a lot of nice connection, make good connections. It's a lot of, yeah, everybody helping each other actually after Day three, I'd, I always have the feeling like today it's, it's not a race anymore, it's rather a journey. Like after the third day, like today, or like, especially this section here, you have the idea it's got through some hard bits and then it's more, it's more a journey and it's not a race anymore, it changes. And everyone supports each other to get over the hard times and it's, yeah, it's just amazing how it should be, I think. And it feels so much this change. No one's rushing anymore too much. We get get through there and we get it done. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, getting there. Just a little bit shy. That's it. Yeah, a bit tired. But it's uh, been really good. Just looking forward to getting to the next checkpoint, but it's been an amazing day. Uh, the views are unbelievable. Uh, just a shame we didn't get them yesterday on Crossfell. But uh, yeah, really enjoying it. It's good fun. Challenging, but good fun. Great people out on the course. And amazing views. And we've been lucky to get the weather today, so all good. It is currently going pretty well. 
there's daylight, I'm awake, I've had a coffee, uh, I'm moving. So yeah, for now things are good. I expect that will not remain the case forever. So while I'm feeling good, I'm just gonna see how far I can get. Um, definitely make the most of the daylight while I can. Um, and then I think just see what's going on when I get to Bellingham and take it from there, I think is the idea. Good evening from Kirk Yetton. To say we've had a big day here is an understatement. I don't think I've stopped grinning since the moment I got out of bed. Uh, but before we get into Jack Scott's outrageous exploits on the Pennine Way, let's go back to before sunrise and talk about another course record breaking run, namely that of Joe O'Leary, who this morning won the Montane Winter Spine Challenger North, smashing a solid 10 hours or so off that course record. Next over the line was Tom Hollings, winner of the full race in 2017. Were it not for Joe O'Leary, Tom would now have the course record. He broke the previous time after an exceptional performance on the northernmost section of the Pennine Way. And then came Nikki Arthur, who's had an exceptional race. She made some great tactical decisions late on, crawl her way up that leaderboard, reeling people in, took third overall. And the real headline there is, she took 20 hours off the existing course record, the better part of an actual day. I honestly don't really know where to begin talking about what Jack Scott did earlier today. I, I, I haven't quite processed it, so Lord knows he can't have at this point. What he did out there today is beyond what I thought was possible in race conditions. And I, I will hand on heart say that now, if you'd have asked me in Edale if someone could do this in race under 75 hours, I would have said no for a number of reasons. Jack proved me unequivocally wrong today. His decision-making all the way along the course was excellent. It, it, his physical performance over the last few days, he was at 100%, 100% of the time, but he never looked to be suffering. In checkpoints, he was efficient, he knew what he needed, and he got moving again. An absolute masterclass of a performance from a 29-year-old runner. Lord alone knows what he's gonna do next. And then, of course, came Damien Hall, a slightly bittersweet experience because on any other day that would have been the race winning performance, on any other day that would have been a new course record. But what it is, is absolutely a personal best for Damien. It is the second fastest time of all time in this race. It means he has now come fourth, third, first, and now second in this race. Now I think it's gonna be a good couple of days before I stop grinning about today, but let's not forget this race keeps going until Sunday morning. We still have runners out there on the course, threading all the way back across the border, back into England, almost halfway down the Pennine Way. And they have another night and possibly another night ahead of them. It is bitterly, brutally cold out there. Stick with us, wish them luck, keep willing those dots along the way. <laughs> 